Okay, can you uh, can you guys see the screen? Yes, Phil, we can see your screen. Okay. All right, um, I, I will go ahead. So uh, this is a uh, uh, paper called the uh, Tidal Vision Transformer with uh, deformable uh, attention. Um, so basically what they're trying to do is apply some of the technique that's uh, already used in uh, CNN uh, to move it to the transform, uh, transformer. So when you look at a transformer versus a, a CNN, um, basically you want to re replace the convolution mechanism with the attention uh, mechanism. So the, the advantage of a attention mechanism over convolution is that it has a larger uh, receptive field. It's no longer limited by the size of the kernel. So because that it's capable of modeling long range uh, dependencies for you know, large objects and so forth. Um, the uh, disadvantage, of course, um, because now it has to do attention for uh, uh, every uh, pixel value in the uh, image that lead to excess number of keys and values for each uh, query. And that causes uh, one risk is very high computational cost. And the second one is risk of uh, overfitting. So, so what in the, uh, in the, for the transformer uh, to apply this um, global attention, so it has to come up with some solution to reduce the computation costs. Uh, one is come up with a window-based uh, local attention uh, scheme. So divide the, uh, uh, the, the picture up into several different windows and limit the attention to that window. So that's a swing transformer, for example. Uh, the second technique is using some type of downsampling to reduce the amount of uh, calculation uh, that will be represented by the pyramid uh, vision transformer. So if you look at those both methods, um, uh, they are somewhat mechanical, uh, right? So, so it's not really uh, depend on the underlying uh, data. So, so that becomes a, a, a shortfall of those uh, technique um, so what's really needed is to have a, a, a more sparse version, a sparse and efficient version of the attention, but that's dependent on the underlying uh, data. So the solution already exists uh, in convolution and that's called the deformable uh, CN. So I went back to the, some of the, uh, a couple of the paper, there was two papers on deformable CNN. Um, so here's the, the basic formula, uh, what it's doing. So it's calculating the, uh, the, the feature map Y. Uh, it's basically it's a weighted sum of the weights in the kernel uh, with the uh, feature, uh, the input feature map of X. But the value of X is modified by a small offset, which you see the delta, uh, delta PK and there. And this offset is calculated by applying a separate convolution layer over the input uh, feature map. So, so this offset becomes uh, data dependent. It depends on what the underlying uh, the, the input feature uh, would be. And that offset is applied to uh, every point of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, the, the convolution the kernel. So um, because that, the, the, space, the space complexity of this uh, deformable offset is, is quadratic. Uh, the meaning is, is the height times the width. Uh, so these two elements uh, making it quadratic and the rest is the number of channels and also the size of the kernel, but these are relatively small numbers. So the space complexity is uh, basically square, uh, N square. Uh, that's quadratic, that's somewhat manageable. Um, so in, in this deformable convolution, uh, there's a, uh, two terms, one's the offset, which is the delta PK, and then the se second one's the modulation, which is the delta uh, uh, MK. And so, so basically uh, this is the, uh, the, the solution uh, in uh, CNN. Um, and what this paper has done is basically borrow the, the concept and moved it into the uh, uh, transformer uh, realm. So, how did they uh, implement the deformable uh, attention? So it, it's really using the similar method, but the one challenge is the space, the space complexity. Uh, now it has, uh, instead of N square, it's, it's N uh, uh, to the fourth power uh, because the space complexity is the number of query times the number of key times the number of channel, whereas the number of query and the number of key both are equal to the height times the width. So essentially the height times the width times the height 
times the width again. So that becomes n to the uh, fourth power. Um, and that causes uh, a bit challenge in terms of the computational um, uh, resource. Uh, but the, what the paper said is that um, global attention over the entire image usually results in almost the same attention pattern for different queries uh, being input into the system. So the intuition is that if it can learn a set of global keys to be shared with different queries, and that way it can achieve a more uh, reasonable trade-off. And the paper claims it can reduce the space, comple uh, space complexity uh, to linear uh, with regard to the, uh, uh, to the channel. I mean, the, there's a pretty complicated formula in the paper. I don't entirely understand it, but it, it claims that the only quadratic aspect of it will be the number of channels. Uh, it was able to class the, collapse the dimension along the height and the width uh, so reducing the splash, uh, space complexity to something more, um, uh, more manageable. Um, so if we look at um, sort of intuitively what, what the uh, author is trying to do. So on the upper left-hand side, you have the VIT, which is the original vision transformer, and that's a global attention scheme. So for each query goes in, it has to calculate attention to each um, uh, pair of patches uh, in the image. That's why you see the receptive field being the entire, uh, entire image. And the B is the swing transformer, which is a window base uh, of VIT. It's VIT, but limited by window. You can see each query results in a receptive field that's only in its quadrant. And the, the C one uh, in, the, uh, in the figure C, that, that is the deformable convolution. So that's the uh, that's not the transformer. That's a convolution uh, where the author is borrowing the idea from. So uh, you have a convolution, uh, you have the kernel window, uh, but for each, uh, the, the, the point, uh, the, the receptive field is deformed uh, by the, those offset points uh, relative to the underlying uh, feature. So the author is trying to borrow that idea into uh, the, as you can see in the figure D, which is a deformable attention. So in this case, uh, there's no there's no window because it's global attention, but the global attention uh, is uh, related to the underlying features. Uh, and for different queries going in, the red and the blue, they're sharing the same set of keys to the extent when they're, the keys are similar. So the actual implementation is actually, uh, I, I think it's, you know, I don't understand all the math behind it, but I think the what, what the author is trying to do, I, I think it's quite, it's actually quite straightforward. So, so this is the encoding module of uh, this deformable uh, attention scheme. If you look at the right-hand side, uh, where, it, where the sample feature box is, if you look at this part to the right, um, you know, you have the set of uh, way, uh, value and key and as well as query going to a multi-head attention. I mean, that is, you know, basically a copy from the original uh, MHA. There's really no, no difference, right? The, the only difference is that there's another separate network on the top uh, here where, um, uh, where the, uh, the model is calculating a, a set of offset uh, for the reference, uh, uh, reference points. And this offset uh, is trained in a separate convolution, uh, a two-layer convolution network. And that, that idea is identical to how deformable CNN is implemented um, as well. So I, I think in terms of implementation, it's actually uh, uh, quite, uh, quite straightforward. And then this is the uh, overall, overall architecture. Now the, the overall architecture is a, the, the author put in a four stage design where the first two stages is uh, the same local attention and shifted window to learn the local features. And then the, la the, the later stage, the third and fourth, uh, it's using a combination of local attention and deformable attention. So it's alternating local and global receptive uh, field. And once again, uh, this idea also comes from the deformable convolution because in the, um, the deformable convolution, uh, what they realize is that uh, the, the def deformable uh, convolution should only be applied to the last few layers of the convolution network because they're more likely to um, to, to, to get, uh, contain object uh, level uh, information where the early layers is more 
about learning the basic features like the shapes and lines and so forth. So we try, we try to do a demo. So this is the, uh, the picture that the author showed in the paper where it's showing that uh, where the, um, the, the, the attention, the circle of the yellow uh, uh, dots represent the, the weight of the attention. You can see the weight of attention that traces the outline of the object of, of interest. So we try to run this demo, but um, the, the, the program is very resource intensive when we ran out of um, uh, memory when trying to trying to run it. So what we did is we went back to a uh, the deformable uh, convolution because it requires less uh, memory. So what the demo we're showing here on this slide is really the uh, is deformable convolution rather than deformable attention. But we think you know the idea behind of it is, is very similar. So this come out of a very simple uh, the, the number the means classifier. Uh, was two layers of regular convolution, and on top of it, we added two layers of deformable uh, convolution. So on the uh, left-hand side, you can see is the result of the regular convolution of the layer four and layer five, uh, the output where you have a query point, and, and then where the where the uh, uh, the, the response uh, the, the the corresponding keys are, and then on the right-hand side is uh, the same. Uh, program, but with the deformable uh, convolution. So you can see where the, the keys are much more closely tracing the shape of the object that, that the program is trying to uh, uh, detect. So we, we, we managed to find a simple implementation of this. Uh, so we, you know, I can include the link in there and you guys can, can try if you like, but that's the best we can do in terms of a uh, uh, demo. So, so that, that's what we have. So uh, any questions, uh, feel free. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. What is the offset and modulation? I think... uh, I'm sorry, talk about modulation? Yeah, the offset and the modulation, it is a little confusing. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. The, what about the offset and the modulation? Yeah, what exactly is the offset? What exactly is the modulation? Um, you know, I, I don't fully understand the, the math uh, behind it. I mean, the module, the, the offset is basically, it's a, a separate convolution uh, uh, over the underlying, the input input uh, feature. Uh, so so essentially is detecting, it's looking at the input feature map and, and just, Detecting where the attention should be paid, and, and so shifting that um, that that uh, the key uh, corresponding to the query based on with the underlying attention weight, uh, based on the underlying the the, the features. Thank you. 